Y'all, this bird has a death wish. Yesterday, it was yelling at, at us before, like, we, ha we were just in the house in front of the door, which, you know, that's funny and all. But this morning, it started chanting outside my bedroom window, like, before any of us got out of bed. 5.30 a.m. Like, this junk has got to stop, bird. For real. Bird. Oh my goodness. They must have interviewed him for that angry bird <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. You waking up the whole neighborhood, bird. This is kind of embarrassing. Don't you agree, guy? <laughs> bird. Go away. <laughs> Boo when I ran. <laughs> world. So, I have decided that I'm going to try to read two books today amidst this chaos. I am going to work on my common core fiction and non-fiction pairing. So, Tracy Chevalier's Remarkable Creatures and The Dinosaur Artist. So, um, this one is about amateur paleontologist and I have heard so much about it. So many people have said I will love it. I'm really excited to get started. Um, I didn't love The Girl with the Pearl Earring as much as the world seems to. I found it slightly boring, um, but there was some really amazing, there was one really amazing sentence in the middle that has stuck with me. Um, but I have high hopes for this one because I love the topic material. So, uh, these books are just under 600 pages, like I think 589 maybe, you know, you know, I like math. <laughs> um, so it's going to take me like probably a good 12 hours to read both of them on a good day. So here's hoping I have a good day, but I do have a lot of, I think I have a lot of errands and things to do, chores and such. So my only hope is to get a lot of reading done this morning before Gabriel gets up and we have to start running our errands and doing the things. So I better get to that. I might have to go inside and hope the bird leaves because, you know, I'm not sure if this is conducive to reading. Whoa. Look at that. It's a jungle out there. Good morning, Corey. Look at poor guy. Ah. Bird. Here it comes. Are y'all getting tired of this yet? Uh oh. Don't move, guy. It's gonna get you. Oh, baby. <laughs> oh, mm. That is one remarkable creature out there. Okay, here we go. See, I knew this was my kind of book. 
An unladylike pursuit, dirty and mysterious. Yep, that's what I'm talking about. I can so relate. So this is three spinsters that move to a coast when their brother marries. And we had not long been installed in Morley Cottage before I grew certain that fossils were to be my passion. For I had to find a passion. I was 25 years old, unlikely ever to marry, and in need of a hobby to fill my days. It is so tedious being a lady sometimes. <laughs> I think I'm going to love this book. The writing is fabulous. And the characters, I think, will be even more so. <laughs> Come on, boo. Come on, boo. Oh, we gotta go in the house, boo. Come on. Cats. <laughs> Better let boo go. Need help, boo? I am really finding this book charming. Um, I was more at ease when she was with me, for I worried about the tide cutting me off. Mary had no fear of that, for she had a natural feel for the tides that I never really learned. Perhaps to have that sense, you must grow up with the sea so close you could leap into it from your window. While I consulted tide tables in our almanac before going out on the beach, Mary always knew what the tide was doing, coming in or going out, neap or spring, and how much of the beach was exposed at any given time. On my own, I only went along the beach when the tide was receding, for I knew I had a very few clear hours, though even then I often lost track of time, as is so easy to do while hunting, and would turn to find the sea creeping up on me. When I was with Mary, she naturally kept track in her head of the movement of the sea. I valued Mary's company for other reasons, too, as she taught me many things, how the sea sorts stones of similar sizes into bands along the shore, and which band you might find what fossils in, how to spot vertical cracks in the cliff face that warn of a possible landscape, where to access the cliff walks we could use if the tide did cut us off. What are you doing, guy? Hmm. Really? Okay, so we have met uh, Mary Anning, who at the opening of the book is a little girl. And then I got dressed. So I was feeling a little, you know, morning funky. So, um, yeah, I... I love her character. She reminds me a lot of my dad and my brothers um, who have spent their whole lives as commercial fishermen. So, you know, they know the water. Oh, and we're competing with the washing machine too. Uh, Mockingbird washing machine, you know. Um, but yeah, my, my dad and brothers has just spent their whole lives out on the sea and just understand it so well and then um our main character whose name i do not know yet i mean i know her last name but y'all don't care about names do you i struggle um but it's just interesting to see the contrast because our main character hers is all book learning uh, which has its place as well and i love that you see that in this this um, story, like, you know, she's, she's pulling from all of her, you know, studies of the books she's had access to, and, you know, being a woman, she doesn't have as much access to those things, um, and her religious upbringing, and the things that she's heard from the um, men in those circles that she's met, but I just really, I think the contrast is really brilliant in here between, you know, the men and the women and the, um, the education at the time and, um, being a student of nature. It's just all very fascinating. 
And also, it's been super serendipitous because I was just uh, working on this last night, Marilyn Robinson. When I was a child, I read books. And she's a congregationalist, as is Mary Anning. So it's super interesting to have that tie-in as well and seeing um, the difference in religious perspectives along with the science. So, yeah, this is so good. All you guys that were telling me that I needed to read this are so right. We got a standoff. <laughs> this is so, so good. So the section I just read was from the perspective of that little girl and Mary Anning. And oh, it reminded me so much of my childhood. It's her and her older brother, like that was me and my brother, a couple years apart. He was two years older, two and a half years older. And we actually lived right, like literally across the street from the ocean when I was in like second and third grade. And we used to go together and I'm sure he was supposed to be watching me um, or we were watching out for each other or whatever. But I guess he would have been in sixth grade, so a little more responsible. I made it, here I am. But yeah, we used to go to the beach and like they're, you know, beach combing for these fossils and then the cliffs and such, but we, you know, we were looking for shells and shark teeth, but oh, the nostalgia. Um, and there's another section where she's talking about, you know, to be a good student of, of nature and to, you know, find these discoveries, you have to know how to look. And like, that is so how I feel, you know, out on the hunt for wildflowers and um, little bugs because you know, it's, you have to look for the differences. So obviously color is key. Um, but more than that, it's, you know, different shapes that catch your eye and movement, you know, like, for example, knowing that you're looking at um, a hummingbird moth instead of a bee because they're mimics, but it's, it's the flight pattern catches your eye. And, you know, you have to, to know what you're looking for, like, to know how to look, I should say, because you don't ever know what you're gonna find, but it's, it's how to look for things that are unexpected. So, this book, oh, happy day, I love it. This is my guy. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Thanks to Jacqueline from Six Minutes for Me. My August buddy reading, Eric Larson crew. And this one, an excellent graphic novel duology that I've been wanting. I've read it before, but wanted a set. And <laughs> thanks to Britta. Look what I got. So excited. I need to try it out right now. Hi. Did you take that box away from Boo? Good she boy. Was. She, was. she was in it, wasn't she? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Cat trap. Okay, here goes. First slice. Oh, oops. Let's try that again. I think it was a cheese malfunction. That's so cool. Hey, Gabriel got a new coffee. I think it's from Seattle. Yeah, Rag Cat Coffee Company. And it smells amazing. 
Okay, so I have 100 pages left of book number one. I have to admit, I got distracted for two, maybe three hours. I haven't done the math. I've read for four hours so far today, so, you know, that's something. Off to do my errands. So, time's ticking. Here we go. Hey, boo. Back from the grocery. It's 5.30 and I haven't finished a book yet. It's probably not going well. Mm -mm -mm. I did that and that. And that's it. <laughs> well, here I am again. Seems like I have been here before today. But checking in, it's 7.30. And according to my Bookly app, which I am loving that app, by the way. Bookly, B-O-O-K-L-Y. Um, it took me five and a half hours to finish Remarkable Creatures. And I thoroughly enjoyed this so much. My kind of reading, I'm here to say. Um, I just, I love fossils. I do. And so, to read about this woman, like, discovering fossils back in the day when nobody even really like they were just starting to understand what fossils were so good so good anyway um on to dinosaur thief thievery dinosaur artists obsession science and the go global quest for fossils by Paige williams so uh, i'm gonna get started on this Highly doubt that I can finish it today, but I will at least get my first impressions going and then check in. And I hear the bird. Oh, that bird. Oh, man. Ooh, that's exciting. <laughs> Okay, so I have read the introduction and the first chapter of this book and um, not quite as instantly impressed. I think there are going to be things that I'm really interested in about it. It's talking about who has rights to the fossils um, and the difference between paleontologists and fossil hunters and people that are selling them for profit and people who are searching for science and um, in the different, you know, laws globally, different countries. So all that's going to be interesting. I skimmed most of the introduction because it was kind of basic dinosaur lingo that I mostly knew. Um, and then the first chapter, her writing style, she does something that kind of gets on my nerves and makes me skim um, in that she spends too much time writing detailed minutia of, of settings and people. So, you know, obviously I like that when it's exploring um, a new area, you know, that's super cool and interesting and new animal, you know, science-y stuff, but she's doing it with, you know, all the people, like, she's telling me everything they're wearing, including their accessories, um, the two-year-old daughter at the birthday party, and I just really don't care, <laughs> so there's that. Anyway, I'm going to continue, you know, it's getting dark, but I think, um, this is a 300, no, no 300 pager, and so I'm not going to finish, but hopefully I can maybe get 100 pages in tonight and then finish it up in the morning, so I will keep you posted. No. <laughs> oh my goodness, Florida. And Doris on the same page. 
win and nudity. I think I'll pass on that one. Uh, the Bear Buns Cafe. Yep. <laughs> and there's my childhood right there. Florida's Gateway Fossil is shark teeth. Eric was maybe five when he found his first shark tooth. Yep. That was me. Doris had given birth to Eric in a Tampa hospital, but it was to the waters that he seemed born. That sentence is trying a little too hard, boo. Hey. It's putting you to sleep, ain't it? Mountain goat sighting. <laughs> you can see wildlife anywhere. You just have to know how to look. Ooh, that's some concerned key cats. He goes already under the bed. Yep, we need a new shut-off valve on the toilet, fun times. It's okay, boo. You know where Pico was the whole time the plumber was here, right? Hmm? You know where Pico was the whole time the plumber was here, right? Underneath the bed? Yep. He is the very definition of a scaredy cat. <laughs> Guess where boo was the whole time? Is there? Yep, under his feet. Curiosity killed the cat. You two are both like memes waiting to happen. Okay, let's taste the birch beer. Pretty strong. Ooh, let me see the bottle. Sioux City birch beer and pizza. Yep, turning over a new leaf again, pun intended. <laughs> hey, so oh, an awkward angle. Um, ugh, bad lighting. I'm so not prepared for this, boo. Um, anyway, I finished this finally. I say finally, I just started it last night <laughs> anyway um so i finished the 600 pages i was not able to finish it in one day um because you know i just get distracted but i finished them in 10 hours according to my bookly app so that was two hours less than i projected i thought i would need 12 hours However, I skim read a lot of this because it really wasn't very good. There were some really interesting bits, um, you know, bits about paleontology and the history of paleontology and uh, countries affected by paleontology. However, a word of advice to all you potential authors out there know your audience people who are interested in paleontology probably are not going to care so much about what so-and-so's daughter wore to her second birthday party i mean i guess i pick up on nervous tics of authors in their writing like you know mary stewart's propensity for lighting up a cigarette um and, you know, the last one I read um, that I remember was taking a sip of water. I don't remember which one that was, but both books were really good, but they had those little ticks. This one, she just really got off on describing what people wearing, were wearing, like, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, there were just a lot of boring parts that she needed to snip snip but then it wouldn't have been a 300 page book so you know I guess that's a problem for authors too 300 pages seems to be the norm anyway I'm rambling I finished so I'm gonna sign off now because um 
I need to edit the vlog prior to this one and get it posted. And I need to get my watch later list under control because it's back into triple digits. What can you do? You read, you don't have time for watching. So I guess I gotta flip back over to the watching side of things now. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I'll be back soon, bye. I forgot to show you my new t-shirt from my friend Jenny's pop-up shop where I got the flamingo print. Y'all, yeah. Yeah, appropriate, appropriate. And I need to reel in the t-shirt buying this summer. Anyway, bye.